It's 11 p.m. at night and I'm at the gym doing bicep curls with a bunch of wires connected to my computer. That's me trying to make a device to count reps. Bicep curls. One. Two. Three. But why? Well, it all started when I was at the gym doing bicep One, curls. Two. Three. Ooh, who's that? She lost count. Nine. I'm pretty sure this would have happened to you as well, but wouldn't it be so much nicer to have someone else do the counting while you can just focus on the form of your workout? Well, that's how my search for an AI gym assistant started. I started looking for different options to achieve this task. In order to count the repetition, the computer has to recognize what exactly counts as a single repetition. One way to do this is you could use a camera and run a computer vision model on a computer for posture detection and train it to recognize different exercises. But this wouldn't be very practical as you'd have to carry around the camera and the computer to the gym. But I wanted something more wearable, like a watch. But there's still a problem. How do you make a computer recognize what a rep is? You could make a rule-based system exactly specifying the angles and positions at different instances. With enough if-else statements, it should be theoretically possible. But you do notice a problem with this approach, right? The human motion isn't very fixed, and not every rep that I do is identical. So there is no way that I could add all the different conditions into an if-else statement. If only there was a way for me to do the exercise and teach the computer what exactly a good repetition looks like. This is where we come into the machine learning territory. AI and ML is not just self-driving cars and chatbots. In fact, it's much more than that. Anytime we run a mathematical model to make a prediction or a decision, we are using ML. In traditional programming, we give the rules and the inputs. It spits out the outputs. Whereas a machine learning algorithm, we give both the inputs and the outputs. It spits out the rules that relates the inputs to the outputs, also called as an ML model, which is later used for running an inference where we give in the inputs and it provides the outputs. But in most cases, useful machine learning algorithms require huge amount of computing resources. And that's when I came across this book, Tiny ML by Pete Warden. Basically, when you run machine learning on these teeny tiny microcontrollers, it's called Tiny ML. Yeah, shocking, right? The first example of the book, we have the input 0 to 2 pi and the corresponding outputs, which somewhat looks like a sine wave. When we train the model using this data, I would expect it to give the sine function as the output. It runs the model on the device and not on the cloud. It's called edge computing and it's much faster. So here's a secret about tiny ML. The training part of ML is actually done on powerful cloud computers like Google Colab, where I uploaded the data and trained the model and downloaded the train model. Only the inference is done on an Arduino. And this is the machine learning model of a sine wave. It's obviously not perfect. So what does all of this have to do with my problem? Well, that's when I had a genius idea. After every rep, there's systematic exhaling. What if I could train an ML model to recognize this breathing and count it as one rep? Ideally, I had to read this whole book to figure out how to do that, but I was running out of time and my muscles were shrinking fast. Instead, I decided to use Edge Impulse, which is much more intuitive platform for training and deploying ML models on Edge devices. First step is data collection. The Arduino already has a built-in mic, so I just started recording data. After I had about 20 minutes of data, I also added some pre-existing voice data for keywords like yes, no, and unknown for a classifier to run. Second step, 
is training the ML model. I selected classifier as it has to classify the outputs from four labels, breathing, yes, no, or unknown. The train model had an accuracy of 94.9%. In order to increase the accuracy, we could change the neural network architecture. I will get into that in the later part of this video. Third step is deploying the ML model. I downloaded the Arduino code and uploaded it to the Arduino. Now I had to put the electronics together. I used a battery charging circuit to safely charge the 3.7 volt LiPo battery, a boost converter to make the 3.7 volt into 5 volts that the Arduino requires, and a regular switch. I designed a 3D printed enclosure for this and somehow managed to squeeze in everything inside. and used an old chain to make a pendant-like variable. But seriously though, I would say this is very fashionable in the gym. Alright, let's put this device to test. I wore the pendant and went to the gym to test it. In the meanwhile, I had designed an app using MIT App Inventor. Although it looks like scratch, trust me, this was the most difficult part of this project. Then I switched on the device, connected it to the app, selected the workout, and started the workout. One, two, three, four, mm? five, one, two, three. The model was working, barely. It was unreliable for three main reasons. The noise in my room was different from the noise in the gym. My breathing pattern was not consistent with the reps. And, well, it turns out a pendant is not a great gym accessory. Overall, trash idea. So I had to toss it in the bin. Just kidding, these are 3000 each and they have IMUs as an inertial measurement unit. Instead of collecting audio data, what if I could actually just collect motion data and train the machine learning model? And this time I wanted a watch and no more wires. So I started designing PCB. For that, I used Altium Designer, which is the industry standard for PCB design software and is a powerful tool because it comes with Altium 365, which is an open electronics platform for connecting everyone involved in the electronics development. And if you are a student from India looking to get into electronics design, you should check out Altium Student Lab. It provides you with free access to Altium Designer, Altium 365, and if you finish a course, you could earn a certificate to make your resume stand out. Check out the link in the description below. Once I was done making the schematics and designed the PCBs, I had to get them manufactured. For that, I used JLC PCBs. I've used their services for all of my previous projects and they've been very reliable and provide high quality PCBs for affordable prices. Just upload your Gerber files, select your configuration and place your order. The PCBs arrived in a few days and now I just had to solder in all the components. I designed a new 3D printed case and used an elastic band with velcro for the straps. Alright, now I had to train and deploy the ML model. Again, the first step is data collection. But this time I had to go to the gym to record motion data. So I chose three different exercises, bicep curls, chest press and tricep pull downs. 
So I went to the gym for three days straight with a laptop and after over 200 repetitions later, I had enough data collected to make a decent ML model that would work just fine. The data collected is stored into a CSV file of time series data with three axes for accelerometer and three axes for gyroscope. If you notice something, the scales of data of the accelerometer is different from that of the gyroscope. This is not very ideal. So we perform normalization on the data to make all values between zero to one. This is called feature scaling. After uploading the data to edge impulse, there are three parts in impulse design. The input block where we choose the axes and the learning block where we choose the ML algorithm. It's again a classifier as we have to classify between the three exercises. And then the processing block, which converts the raw accelerometer data into meaningful features like mean value, standard deviation, RMS value, etc. This is called feature extraction. So Edge Impulse plots these features on a map and if they form unique clusters for each label like this, then the ML model should also be able to classify the labels accurately. Next step is training the ML model. The features we extracted are fed into a neural network's first layer, also called the input layer. And the next two layers are called dense layer, where every neuron is connected to every neuron in the previous layer. A neuron is the simplest unit in a neural network. What it does, it takes in an input and multiplies a number to it called weight and adds a number to it called bias. And then it applies an activation function like ReLU and gives the output. The last layer is called the output layer. It gives the probability of the particular exercise being the correct output. So when we say we're training the ML model, it basically means that we're finding the right set of weights and biases such that the predicted output with the highest probability matches the input exercise that we gave. Let me explain how this is useful for us. In the next section, you have to make the neural network architecture. So again, there is an input layer, two dense layers, and training with this architecture gave an accuracy of 94.9%. So I added a dropout layer. What does that do? When you train the model so well, that it only works on training data and not on new unseen data. That's called overfitting. Well, to avoid that, we pluck out neurons randomly while training. This is what the dropout layer does. 0.1 means that it would remove one tenth of the neurons every training cycle. And training with this architecture gave an accuracy of 96.2%. Finally, I added another dense layer, which increased the accuracy to 97.4%. I wasn't able to increase the accuracy beyond this, and I couldn't wait to test the model out. So I exported the Arduino library and wrote the code for sending the value use via Bluetooth low energy. I also had to change the app a little as this time we're receiving three different counts and we don't need the select workout anymore because that's basically what it's supposed to do. Predict the workout and keep count of the workout. All right, let's test it. Bicep curls. One, two, three. Four. Tricep pull downs. One, two, three, four, five. Chest press. One, two, three, four. The model works pretty good and way better than before. Now all I could do is improve the accuracy by collecting more data and some meddling with the neural network architecture. And of course make the app's UI better. I am Sham Ravi, thank you for watching.